Hey everyone, well I'm working on this generator project and it's all built of scrap materials. Uh, everything's been recycled. The engine is a Suzuki one liter, three cylinder engine. It's throttle body fuel inject, it's gasoline. And the alternators are out of cars and all the wood is just leftover scrap. There's not one bit of material in here that I put any money into. So it's a bit junky, but it's about 48 horsepower to 60 horsepower. I'm not sure exactly this one here. Okay, so I'll just show you how I've mounted everything in here. Now the engine is just mounted down to the skid and I have a few brackets at the back of the engine here and a bracket over here as well, just old actual bed frame there. And so on the side here is basically one of the main brackets that bolt into the side of the engine. I'll just show you how the alternators. Now I just recycled these brackets here. These are just random uh, brackets off of cars. And this one here, I'm utilizing a spring. Um, this one's just mounted directly down. I've just cut the, the actual mount, the original one off the car, bolted it directly down into the skid. So I just welded this pulley here onto the, the main pulley and it gave me an extra couple v belts, so I still have an extra one here. And this one here, I'm going to be putting another uh, alternator on, or a generator, hopefully a converted one to 120 volts. So I've used all the wiring from the car. This was out of a 1990 uh, Pontiac Firefly, and so I've utilized all the wiring. You have to have the the control modules and all that because it's throttle body fuel injects. So, and. So I've just installed all the instrument cluster as well into here because I want to have the RPM and the temperature gauge. They're not working right now, but I'll have all that working. I'll clean up the wiring a bit, um, the connections, and the fuel gauge I'll be using. So that'll be good to have that as well. So what I want to add to this also is a remote starter. So I'm just going to fire it up. Okay, so it hasn't idled down yet, but we'll just take a look at it and see. What I've done here is I've just attached a few alternators onto the front. Um, now this is the original alternator here, but I've attached a pulley. I welded this pulley here on the front of the, the original pulley, so it gave me a few extra belts. So now I've added this GM alternator, and I think it's about 60 amps. This one's 60 amps here. This is uh, out of a Mazda, and this one's a 55 amp alternator. And I've also added an induction motor. Now this one here is a three-quarter horse induction motor, and that's to give me 120 volts. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not working right now because I don't have the right capacitors to get it to work. And if you haven't heard of uh, an induction motor setup as a generator, then um, I'll talk about that in another video. It's, it's actually very common. They're just really tricky to actually get going sometimes. So they're not the greatest. Okay, so it's starting to idle down and the exhaust I just welded. Uh, this was a cat, but it's been pounded out. The actual guts of it are gone. So, so I have to weld this. This comes out, the catalytic converter slides out the top here. So then I can just cut a hole and then drop this in when you get to the job site because this will keep the actual height of the uh, generator low and I still have to weld this buffler onto the cat so you can see it's leaking so I put my hand around it's even quieter. So I built the generator because I wanted a really quiet generator to provide 12 volts to charge battery banks and also some 120 volts uh, but I can just put some inverters in here or whatever and just get uh, 120 volts off of that. So it's pretty quiet, there's no leaks, the water pump's good and sealed. Um, and so what I have to do now is I have to put some insulation in here. I'm going to put some fiberglass insulation around the outside. And so there's still quite a bit of work to be done. So also we can get some heat off of this as well. Uh, and I can just connect into the heater lines and run them to a heater core inside of the built the cottage or whatever, and then have a fan. So yeah, this is just all built from junk, scrap materials. 
and I, I didn't put any money into this. Everything is scrap, uh, but you could build a much better generator if you actually mounted this down to a steel uh, trailer or something, uh, use the rubber mounts of the engine so to, to isolate vibration. Um, you could connect generators uh, to it, uh, 100 amp alternators. You could make a much better setup than this, but everything here was free, so that's why I, uh, I built it this way. Okay, so to turn on this alternator here, what I'm going to do is just connect this wire here. And I can just switch this on. And there we go, there goes that old there. Got to get rid of this vibration, unfortunately. But you can hear how it lowers down the, the RPMs of the engine right down. So that alternator now is, is working, it's charging this battery here. This battery's flat dead. So that one's charging right now. Let's see here. So why I built the generator was because I want a really quiet uh, generator to uh, charge battery banks and you can start it up at night so you don't have to worry about the neighbors and, and people complaining. And I just don't like the, the racket of those, uh, those uh, portable generators. So I'm about 100 feet away from the generator and that's with no insulation uh, on the walls of the generator, no top. Uh, also, the exhaust is leaking, so you can see how quiet it is compared to a portable generator. So it's really not uh, anything to disturb anyone. That sound is is really just a, a low roar in the background, so it's not really going to uh, make anyone want to complain. And so I don't worry about the noise here, uh, but when I'm on job sites where I'm in residential areas, that's when um, people don't like the, uh, the actual generator is making a lot of noise. So the cooling fan is not working. Um, I'm going to test the relay here. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, so the actual sensor isn't working. So I think this is definitely up to, um, up to temperature. Okay, so I'm just going to shut her down and So if you're going to be putting together a generator like this, you're pretty well safe with the alternator set up. Uh, but if you're going to be using an induction motor like I'm using here set up, then you're going to want to be um, experienced in some electrical and understand the safety precautions because there's going to be um, about 120 volts there. There could be more. And also you're going to have all these capacitors as well to, um, to actually maintain the field. So I fired the generator up, it's, uh, it's almost minus 20 out here, it's a pretty cold night, and I'll just show you the lights. So there's the instrument lights. So I still have quite a bit of work to do on the generator, I have to insulate it, I have to put a top on it, i got to build some doors for the front here, and for the side as well, so I can access the pulleys and belt and also the service panel here. So there's still quite a bit of work and I'm going to make some more videos on it once it's fully operational and hooked into a battery bank. Well, thank you for watching.